At what annual percentage interest rate compounded quarterly should the lump sum be invested in order for it to double in six years? At what annual percentage interest right compounded quarterly should the lump sum be invested in order for it to double in six years so let's take a look at what we have here so we want some lump sum let's say for instance k right to double in six years so from k in six years we shall have 2k that's what it means when we say that a lump sum should double in six years so what is n n is equals to 6 if you're looking at the number of years right and then it is supposed to be compounded quarterly it is supposed to be con compounded quarterly right so our interest is a, an unknown interest right that, that's what we are looking for essentially our interest is what we are looking for okay so let's take a look we know that when we are saving a lump sum uh, we have a being equals to p multiplied by 1 plus i everything to the power n that's what we have when we have compound interest right and then a our accumulated amount it is 2k regardless of what the value of k is that is the idea you need to comprehend here and then what we're investing the lump sum should be k obviously you can use any other variable you can have this being x and here you have 2x that will totally work and then multiplied by one plus the interest that's what we are looking for right so let's say that we are looking for i divided by four because it is compounded quarterly we are looking for i divided by four if it was compounded monthly obviously we would divide by 12 we shall know that fully well and then we're gonna have n the number of years right it's six but it is compounded quarterly so we have six multiplied by four because in one year we have four quarters so let's go ahead and divide both sides by k let's go ahead and divide both sides by k so k and k cancels out k and k cancels out so we are left with two being equals to one plus i divided by four everything to the power 6 multiplied by 4 6 12 18 24 so we have 24 right there so obviously we can take the square root of 24 uh, on both sides we can say uh, put 2 there and this will be equals to 24 and then we have 1 plus i divided by 4 everything to the power 24 so 24 and 24 cancels out right we are left with 1 plus i divided by 4 and then let me substitute the left hand side on my calculator i have 24 under the square root of 2 uh, that is 1.0293 right so let's take one to the left hand side we're gonna have 0 0.0293 being equals to i divided by 4 and then let's cross multiply and see what we get i'm getting 0 0.1172 being equals to the interest so clearly i should be equals to 11.72 percent you just simply multiply this with 100 and that is the answer uh, you will get to so that is uh, 7.1 that is the interest required if we want to flip some lump sum k to 2k in six years compounded monthly 7.1 not really complicated pretty much straightforward if you've solved any past exam questions you should have came across equation that requires you to do this but anyway let's take a look at 7.2 so in 7.2 um right michaela right let me just say michael because if i say that name too many times i'm i'm gonna butcher it okay so fine uh, michael buys furniture uh to the value of ten thousand. 
she borrows the money on 1 Feb 2023, right, from a financial institution that charges interest rate at 9.5% per annum compounded monthly. Michael agrees to pay a monthly installments of 450. The loan agreement allows Michael to start paying equally uh, to start paying equal monthly installments from 1 August 2023. And then 7.2.1 calculate the total amount owing to the financial institution on 1 July 2023. So let's take a look at this. Uh 1 Feb, right? And then March, April, May, June, July, right? So this is where we take uh, the loan, right? We can take this as our T0. That's where we take the loan. And then we are interested on the amount of the loan on the 1st of July. How much do we owe uh, there on? So let's take a look. So this is um, T1, T2, um, <laughs> T3, T4, and then this is T5. So we have five months between 1 Feb and 1 July, from 1 Feb to 1 July, right? So we know that N is equals to 5. Right. And then what other information do we have? We know that uh, the amount that you borrows um, P is equals to 10,000. And then what are we looking for? We're looking for the total amount owing. So it is A that we're looking for. Right. And then the interest is equals to 9.5% compounded monthly. So we divide that by twelve. Let me explain why I'm using. Um, I'm writing these variables, right? Uh, I'm essentially. I essentially want to use a is equals to p multiplied by one plus i everything to the power n. So this person takes a loan, right? And they only start paying the loan five months after. So during that five months, this interest on that loan that they took. So that is, this is why we are using this formula, right? They've not started paying for the loan. We want to find out the amount of money they are owing after five months. Because in every month, this interest of 9.5% still applies. So that's why we are using this formula. So we would have A being equals to P, uh, which is 10,000, multiplied by 1 plus 9.5% divided by 12 right everything to the power 5 so now it's just a matter of substituting that in the calculator All right the interest is 9.5 percent per annum compounded monthly okay so that is totally fine i don't need to change anything there so let me just substitute that in my calculator 9.5 uh, percent divided by 12 everything to the power 5 i'm getting 10,402.15 so right that is the amount of money uh, michael is owing on the first of um july just like 7.2.1 asks for okay moving to 7.2.2 how many months uh, will it take Michael to pay back the loan? How many months will it take Michael to pay back the loan? So when you talk about uh, the amount of month uh, that we need, we are looking for N, right? So this 10,402.15 uh, should be P, right? When we are using uh, that formula uh, that we use when uh, there is a loan, right? Uh, we have a future value when you're saving, uh, making uh, monthly installments or quarterly installments, and then we have present value when we have a loan. So P, uh, the present value in this case, will be 10,402.15. Because from the 1st of July, the first payment is made 
on the 1st of August. Right. So that is why uh, that A that you calculated in 7.1.1, 7.2.1 is our uh, present value. So that is P, that is N, and we know the amount, uh, the, the installment, the monthly installment that Michael has to pay every month. It is said to be 450. Uh, obviously, we know the interest equals to 9.5% compounded a uh, monthly so we would divide this by 12 when we substitute so look at these values we have n we have the present value we have the monthly installment and the in and the interest it will be obvious uh, what we need to do in this case uh, the present value is equals to x that is the monthly installment multiplied by one minus 1 plus i everything to the minus n divided by the interest so it is advisable not to write this formula from your head but to actually copy it from the question paper to avoid making unnecessary mistakes so 10402.15 is equal to 450 multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus 9.5 percent divided by 12 everything to the minus n right n is what we're looking for right divided by the interest which is 9.5 percent uh, divided by 12 this is one term this is one term so we can cross multiply let me just substitute that in my calculator real quick. So 10,402.15 multiplied by 9.5% divided by 12 because it is compounded monthly. Uh, let me see uh, what I get. I'm getting 82.5. Zero four, uh, meaning equals to four hundred and fifty multiplied by one minus. Here we don't have any variable here. We don't have any variable, so I can put that in my calculator. One plus um, nine point five percent divided by twelve because it is compounded monthly. I'm getting. 1.0079 so we have 1.0079 to the minus n that's what we're dealing with there uh should be easy what we need to do at this point uh, we can divide both sides by 450 we can divide both sides by 450 so 450 and 450 consoles out and then we have 82.3504 divided by 450 which gives us 0 0.183 and this is equals to 1 minus 1.0079 to the minus n obviously i can take this one to the left hand side 0 0.183 minus 1 i get minus let's see minus 0 0.817 being equals to we have this minus sign here on the outside right minus 1.0079 to the minus n so if we divide both sides by minus 1 obviously we're going to get 0 0.817 being equals to 1.0079 to the minus n. Let's introduce log on both sides. 0 0.817 is equals to minus n log of 1.0079. Okay, so let me put that in my calculator. I'm getting minus n is equals to log of 0 
divided by log of 1.0079 and then i'm getting minus 25.69 if i round it off to two decimal places so n is equal to 25.69 so n is equal to 26 we would make uh, the remaining pay payments in 26 months right it will take 26 months uh, to pay off the loan even though on the last month we're not gonna pay the entire 450 because the actual number here is 25.69 so that means that on the last month we are not gonna pay the entire 450 we're gonna pay 450 multiplied by 0 0.69 that's what we actually going to pay on the last month, on the 26th month. So that is 7.2.2. Um, and then 7.2.3, what is the balance of the loan immediately after uh, Michael has made the 25th payment? What is the balance of the loan after the person has made uh, the 25th payment? In order for us to find uh, the balance of the loan, we have to use uh, the same formula we've been using right so p is equals to x multiplied by one minus one plus i everything to the minus n divided by the interest so the only thing that we need to change is the value of n right after we've made our 25th payment after we've made our 25th payment how many months are we left with? We are left with 25.69 minus 25, which is 0 0.69. So if we substitute 0 0.69 here in place of N, we shall be able to get um, the balance of the loan, okay, immediately after uh, making the 25th payment. So we're going to have P being equal to 450 multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus the interest 9.5 percent divided by 12 everything to the minus 0 0.69 because that is um the number of months that are left immediately after making uh, the 25th payment and then we divided this uh, by the interest which is 9.5 percent divided by 12. So let me go ahead and substitute that in my calculator. Uh, 9.5 divided by 12. And then everything to the power minus 0 0.69. Yeah, that looks fine. And then we are dividing with the interest 9.5 divided by 12. And then I'm getting 380. Eight. So the value or the balance of the loan rather is 308.44. Right. So there, there we go. That is the balance of the loan. But obviously, uh, you might get an answer that is different to this one based on how you've been rounding off through the equation. Because you can see that uh, from... 7.2.1 uh, to 7.2.3, we use the answer in one question in the next in order to find uh, the answer, therefore. So, yes, you might get a slightly different answer here on the last one, uh, but it shouldn't be way too off. You cannot get 2,000, for instance, then there would be something wrong. But if it's just slightly different, uh, that is totally fine. We can blame it on the rounding off, but the math should be the same. There we go.